Cheers, babe. Cheers. So we thought we would take today to let you guys get to know us a little bit more. We've each come up with a handful of questions that we're going to ask each other. Correct. And we don't know what the other one's questions are. So it's going to be a surprise and we're just going to have fun with it. Ready? Yep. Let's All right, do it. Let's do it. First question. All right. How did we meet and how long have we been together? Oh, man. We have been together uh, almost six years. Uh -huh. We went on our first date technically October 27th of 2014. And we met through a mutual friend um, in our hometown. But he basically didn't let us meet for months and months. He would talk about how we were going to fall in love and this and that. And he kind of, you know, had a little crush on both of us. We <laughs> called him the lesbian whisperer. So we finally all went out one night and had a great time. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed her company. I hadn't been dating in a really long time for like two years. Um, and I was, you know playing the field and I didn't want to get her involved at the time because I had a feeling she was going to be special. Four months went by. Um, she tried mm. to reach out to me. I tried to reach out to her at one point and she didn't have my number saved so she didn't know who I was and apparently she gets a lot of random texts so <laughs> all I said was hi so that didn't help. So yeah months went by and then we I went out day drinking with a really good friend of mine and I saw her at the bar mm. that day and then that was kind of it. We went on our first date like a week later. Yeah. Natalie actually proposed to me on a trip to Puerto Rico. I did. Yeah. She, yeah, I ha I'm half Puerto Rican and I had never been. Um, and Abby got it for me, the trip as a birthday present. So I was like, oh, I got you. <laughs> I'm sealing the deal there. Yeah. So that was kind of, that was it. But I did propose back in Charleston. You did. She and did. then we got married a year and a half later. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. That was a good question. Random, what is the most memorable thing I've cooked for you? Ooh. <laughs> okay, so this one's really tough because, I mean, every meal you make is freaking amazing. I appreciate you. It's so good. Gosh, I don't know. There was one meal you made me with, like, Adobe in it, and it was like a... Adobe? Like the like the software? Mm. You mean Adobo? <laughs> oh. oh. That's... That was cute. <laughs> I yes, I mean adobo. <laughs> Not the software, the spice. Okay. The pepper. Um, yes. Okay. Honestly, some of my favorite memories <laughs> of eating food with you, like the food that you've made, is just like a bowl of ramen and we're like sitting in bed eating ramen and it's just dribbling all over my chin because I'm enjoying it so much. <laughs> That's everything you ate. True. <laughs> I'm not a ramen expert, but I'll, I'll, you know, we like to doctor up the yeah. packet noodles, which we just found in the grocery store after like three months of this pandemic, we found a box and I almost lost my mind. <laughs> we like to take the noodles. We don't use the packet. I always make my own broth, but we like the noodles and mm -hmm. I, I thought I was never going to see them again. So that was really exciting. Side note. Okay. I like slurping noodles with you. Okay. Okay. Noodles. Okay. Cool. Who thought of fan life first and why? Ooh, uh, I think I had the initial idea. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I think so, yeah. Yeah, we can't actually remember exactly. Um, there wasn't like a defining moment. I would say I go back to, um, it was like five years prior, meeting um, a van lifer, you know, before it was kind of the thing and people were really getting into it. Um, he was living in a yellow VW bus. And um, I met him through a mutual friend and he came and spent the night in our driveway. One of the jobs that I was working at uh, shut down. But it was an Italian restaurant, and I had taken one of those humongous wine bottles, like the huge... The Magnums. Wine, like a 96 Barolo or something. <laughs> anyway, so then that night that we met uh, this guy, uh, me and my friend Shelby, we cracked that bottle open, and uh, we spent, like, the whole night in his VW drinking that wine and talking to him about his travels. Um, and it was just really... I had never heard of anything quite like it. Um, and, and so it kind of got the ball rolling in my head about, wow, that would be a really cool way to travel. Cause I hadn't really traveled, um, at all till I was about 27 years old, you know, but Abby, you know, you had been going, I, I thought she was so cool cause she had traveled on her own, you know, to Italy and Ecuador and she'd been to the Galapagos and she took a Bali trip by herself. Meeting her was awesome because it really kind of started to really, you know, spark my interest in getting, getting out of, you know, the small area that I had grown up in. We started seeing online. YouTube videos of van life and 
yeah, it wasn't long after that. I was like, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't happy necessarily in the job field that, you know, and the hours that I was doing and all that. I think it might have been your idea first, but I was 100% behind it and pushed it all the way. Yeah. When I, when I have something in my mind that I know I want to do, I'm going to make it happen. And so when she brought up the idea of van life, I was like, oh, we can, we can do this. We can make it happen. So we did. <laughs> I guess the why being, you know, wanting a change um, in just the everyday life and, and wanting to be able to explore more. You know, we had taken a few trips together when I was working mm -hmm. um, and ha would get paid time off and we would go and I was just like, you know, it was so cool just to go across to the West Coast because I had never been anywhere but, you know, my little bubble in South Carolina. And, uh, it, yeah, we went there and we really wanted to live there. And then we went to Colorado together and we wanted to live there. And we were like, <laughs> what are we going to do? And so it was perfect. I had moved a lot on my own when I was um, going through college and stuff. And I'd never put anything on the walls in, in all the places I'd lived just because I knew, I don't know, I'd, I never could find, you know, make it homey or, make, you know, feel like it was somewhere that I really felt at home. Um, so I think traveling, you know, this kind of lifestyle was kind of meant for me anyways, you know, mm. I mean, I very much enjoy the idea of change and the unknown more than I had realized. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, I, it's amazing. It's an amazing journey. So yeah. Did that answer your question? I think so. <laughs> okay. What memory in traveling really stuck with you? Okay. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, on the spot. So. Honestly, like, one of the favorite travel memories has to go back to Puerto Rico. Yeah. It's a good trip. That That's was a, a that was a really, I think, formative trip for us. Like, we got engaged. Um, we were visiting, you know, the country where her your family originates from. Like, there was a lot of meaning in that trip. Mm -hmm. um, I got to go where my grandparents both lived. That was yeah. really emotional for me. I hadn't really taking a trip like that, like a trip where you go to visit your roots, you know, and your roots are just as important to me as my no. roots. So going to Puerto Rico and, and like seeing you have that emotional reaction, I mean, I felt it too. The island, it's tropical, it's just, yeah. So I think traveling, it's not just about seeing new places. When you are already connected to a place that you go to, I think it holds even more meaning. And so sure. I'd have to say Puerto yeah. Rico. Yeah. Also on the subject of traveling, where was the first place you went to outside of the States, and what impact did that leave on you? Spain. Yeah. Oddly enough, <laughs> Spain. Yeah. I was I, in high school and went to Spain on a high school trip. Yes, me as well. Seen How it, crazy is that? That was the first trip I'd ever taken out of the country, really, to see, to go anywhere. So, um, that was, it was definitely a culture shock in a good way. Yeah, it was itinerary based. I want to go back. I didn't get to, you know, really take it in the way that I would want to. And now that I, you know, have a stronger palate and I got into food, you know, what I would eat would be very different uh, while, I, while I was there. It was unreal just to see the landscape and to kind of get an idea of the people and then the history. It's, you know, it's just so old world and, and the architecture was gorgeous. Just for the simple fact that I, you know, I hadn't known a world outside of my little bubble. Mm. So it was, uh, it really um, opened my eyes. I didn't get to go to Barcelona. Neither did I. So, so we'll we gotta, go back. we're going back together, well, when we can. Once we can start traveling again, you know, truly taking it in and going wherever we want, what is your most anticipated destination? We have plans to take this whole unit, take the van, the dogs and everything down to South America. I'm really excited about I that. I know you were... Because I, I... When we first met, you were really I studied about abroad something. in Ecuador, and I learned Spanish in high school and college. So I have a conversational Spanish, and I want to improve, and the only way is to really be surrounded by it. And so... I need to learn Spanish. <laughs> that's the only way. <laughs> so I'm excited because I can improve my Spanish. I've been to Ecuador, but that's the only country in South America. And there's so much to see. In Central America, Costa Rica, like... Mm. Uh, the list goes on and on, but I'm very excited about that trip as a whole that's coming up, for sure. Yeah. What about you? I have to agree. I think, well, we're doing, so we want to start in Alaska and mm. go down to um, Argentina. Now that trip's going to be quite postponed, but that actually gives us a lot more time to outfit the van. Yeah. We, we want to do some changes on the van and make it more ready for that kind of trip. You're out there in the middle of nowhere, and it, it you know, a lot of that becomes just survival mode in a way that we don't get to experience in everyday life, and I think, yeah, I think if there's any 
any place that's going to make really make me grow and make me really pay attention mm-hmm. to myself, I think that's a great place Alaska. to go. Alaska. So, yeah, we have we have so many places yeah. that we want to go. <laughs> what do you most like to do when you have alone time? Oh, I don't have a lot of alone time. She doesn't really, <laughs> no, because she, we're like a stuck at the hip. In our 92 square foot home. We live in a <laughs> traveling vehicle, so unless I drop her off at an Airbnb, I mean, I'm kind of stuck with but her. But sometimes I like <laughs> so. to take a walk with the dogs on alone, or I'm doing video and editing work. You have mm. some alone time. What do you like to do? What do I like to do when I'm alone? I actually talk to myself. <laughs> and this is like before I've met you. Like I, It's a thing that I do. Because I feel like a lot of people don't take their own advice Mm. very seriously. And so to talk to myself and ask myself a question and to ponder that question out loud actually helps me understand, you know, my response to it, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I don't don't think that's weird. I think that it's actually kind of healthy. I mean, you have all the thoughts in your head, but just to kind of like put it out on the table. Other than that, I mean, I write. I like to write. It's probably easier for me to write. Like, sit and write poetry when it's just me somewhere mm, in a space. That's true. What is one of your favorite things about me? <laughs> Answer wisely. One, that, one that's like... <laughs> physical thing, I love your dimples. They're not bad. They're not bad. How cute she is. <laughs> she, she be, she's so beautiful. Thanks, oh baby. God, I love you. Other favorite things. She's... It just has a way of, like, just dropping into like a silly dance or just talking in a ridiculous voice and it just makes me laugh so hard so I guess one of my favorite things is your humor and the fact that you make me laugh oh that's sweet yeah what musical instrument do you wish you could play drums drums I've always wanted to play the drums I've always been into alternative music, uh, rock music. I listen to all types of music, but I grew up on like listening to Metallica and Silverchair and Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah, I just always have admired the drum. My anxiety was a lot worse when I was younger, and I always thought it would be a good outlet, you mm-hmm. know, to just be able to bang on something and get, you know, my frustrations out. I never picked it up, but I think in another life I would, uh, I would be a drummer. I think it's lovely. I wish that I could play the saxophone. Also, sax would be my because second. Because I love jazz, and you hardly ever see female musicians playing saxophone. Hmm. So that's saxophone. a good point. Yeah, sax. That's very true. That was love my the second. Sax. My second favorite. That's super cool. Yeah. What do I do that annoys you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we don't have enough time. <laughs> um. Okay. A little thing is, Natalie always drives, because she doesn't do well if someone else is driving a vehicle. Anxiety? Yeah. It's real. Mm -hmm. Um, So she always drives, which means I'm always the passenger. Totally fine. But there's so many times we get in the front, (laughs) buckle our seatbelts, we've hit the road. (laughs) Oh, I'm really thirsty, Abby, can you get me some water? Oh, I need a snack. Abby, can you get me a snack? Oh, I forgot what to close the back window. Can you close? <laughs> I'm always having to get Unless you want me to pull something. over every time, then that's, you know, it, that's, that's, a, that's a stupid little thing. It's a little thing. Yeah. It's, it's not a really. Thing. A big I drive deal. a lot of miles, okay? Yeah. What, okay, what do I do that annoys you? When you eat and then you don't wipe your face and you just let the <laughs> drip all over the <laughs> place. Well, I don't want to waste too many paper towels. <laughs> Or napkins or whatever, so I just wipe once when I'm done eating. But I'm a messy eater. I can't take you out in public. Like, you're so hot, and then I'm just like, watch you eat, and I'm like, damn it, Abby. I love you. What luxury do you enjoy treating yourself to? I love massages. A massage um, is one of my favorite things to get get done. And I'm talking like deep tissue, like not that little stupid. Uh, like get in there what is your favorite thing in our home you (laughs) (laughs) that was the right answer ding 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 (laughs) cheers cheers i love you i love you that's a silly question (laughs) all right (laughs) um if you could instantly learn 
a new talent or skill, what would it be? There's a few that I can think of. I mean, okay, I think it would be really cool. This is unique. You're answering your own questions here. Yeah, but this is unique to me because <laughs> <laughs> I love dance. That's the whole dance and everything. She wanted to t- she wanted to answer. If I could shit. instantly have a skill She's, and like she likes know talking to herself it, too. I I think be, like contortion would be really cool. Like if I could just instantly know how to like bend over in half. Like sit my feet on my head. I like always, in a handstand, I think that would be dope. I would love to know how to break dance. I always yeah. thought in another life I'd be a choreographer, and I just think it's, I think it's the coolest thing. A form of dance, but just, like, spinning on your head and, like, twitching and, you know, like, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's incredible. Yeah. I think that would be a cool talent to have, break dancing. <laughs> I don't know if it's something that would be of use, <laughs> per se, if I could have anything instantly. But, yeah, I don't know. I think that's, I think that'd be cool. What is your idea of a perfect romantic date? I would love to take you somewhere in South America because that's somewhere that you really want to be. And I would love to have, like, just out in the middle of a mountain landscape and have a jazz band, like, come through and, like, play you live jazz while I cook you a meal. That's nice. Whilst you getting a massage. (laughs) All right, I'll take it. Oh my god. <laughs> I would take you up in a hot air balloon. During I, a during a hot air balloon festival so you could see all the balloons. She knows how much I love balloons and I want to see them so bad. Oh my god. You sweet baby. Ready for the last question? Okay. Alright. Last question. Okay. For everyone. What brings meaning to your life? My family. My friends that have been in my life for a long time. The last couple of years have been the most abundant mm. parts of my life, other than childhood. <laughs> I very much appreciate and enjoyed my childhood, but I would say that this part of my life has been the most eye-opening, the most um, precious experience that I've had. Finding you and, and being able to make a life with you has been, has been the biggest joy, for sure. It's a, it's a hard question. This is meaningful. The fact that we can share our story, maybe inspiring other people to do the same thing. This is bringing meaning to to our lives. Doing this. I think um, being kind to people is probably the biggest meaning. Mm. Um, I think that that's going few and far between these days. And uh, it feels really good to be good to other people. I, I mean, mm. it's hard to hate. Hate is, hate is a full-time job, and I just don't understand... I don't get it. Meaning in life comes from kindness to other people. It comes from loving other people. It comes from being open to receiving love. And it comes from just being really grateful for the experiences you're having in life. Yeah. You are the sum of the stories you can tell. Yeah. So anyways, that was it. That was the video. We wanted to do a Q&A um, of some random questions to hopefully you guys learn a little bit more about our quirks and us in general um thank you for all the new followers and uh yeah uh keep tuning in next week we are going to be hopefully traveling again we've kind of been stationary things are starting to open up again so so we might be able to hit the road we'll see yeah but anyways we will we'll catch you next time (laughs) be sure to subscribe to our channel to keep seeing our videos yes thank you guys take care bye bye